let's read one of my favorite sonnets, one of my favorite poems of the 20th century, Robert Hayden's Those Winter Sundays. So we have the poem. Uh, here we go. Here's the poem. Let's listen. Let's first listen to Hayden read the poem. Here is a poem that comes directly out of my boyhood in Detroit. It's called Those Winter Sundays. Sundays, too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue-black cold. Then, with cracked hands and ached from labor in the weekday weather, made bank fires blaze. No one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call. And slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house, speaking indifferently to him who had driven out the coal, and polish my good shoes as well. What did I know? What did I know of love's austere and lonely offices? Let's hear Hayden read it one more time. Here is a poem that comes directly out of my boyhood in Detroit. It's called Those Winter Sundays. Sundays, too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue-black cold. Then, with cracked hands and ached from labor in the weekday weather, made bank fires blaze. No one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call. And slowly, I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house speaking indifferently to him who had driven out the coal and polished my good shoes as well. What did I know? What did I know of love's austere and lonely offices? That, that's Hayden reading uh, Those Winter Sundays, a really famous poem. Uh, you can see how it connects to some of our themes. Hayden, Hayden is, a, is such a fascinating poet. Let's jump into a little background on Robert Hayden here. Uh, let's see. There's Hayden. 1913 to 1980. Really famous African-American poet. He, he ran into some trouble with the group BAM, Black Arts Movement, that consist, uh, consisted of Mary Baraka, Gwendolyn Brooks, Nikki Giovanni. They, he, he got taken the task, they said he wasn't writing militant enough, not black enough. You know, he, he was kind of uh, taking some of his cues from other poets and doing his own thing. I think he's one of the most singular and greatest poems of, of all time, of our generation. And let's closely look at Those Winter Sundays. So you have the title, Those Winter Sundays. And I want you to think about Winter Sundays. What do you do on winter Sundays? What, what do winter Sundays usually evoke in us? And let's jump into the first stanza here. Sundays too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue black cold. So what does that say about the father? Sundays too. Not only does, on, does father get up early on Sundays, he gets up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. He never gets a day off. He never gets a day to sleep in. You know, this is a good poem to juxtapose with some of our other poems that deal with parents and children. Sundays too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue-black cold. What the hell's the blue-black cold? What does that mean? That means it's cold out, right? That's not just you know, chilly. It's the blue-black cold. That's cold. Then with cracked hands that ached from labor in the weekday weather made banked fires blaze. Cracked hands tells us a lot about what he does for a living. He's a working man, right? He's a laborer. He, he's not sitting in an office. He, he, works, he works for a living with his hands. There's also a wonderful interplay, uh, subtle back and forth between cold and hot. You know, we have the cold and then made banked fires blaze. So this first sentence in the, this first uh, stanza of the five lines, this gives us a, a portrait of the father. No one ever thanked him. 
that's such a fascinating uh, aside there. Think of this. No one ever thanked him. I, I always like to argue and, and say, I mean, please argue with me. Isn't that, isn't that the measure a lot of times of a good parent that the kids are just going to take for granted there's going to be food on the table? There's going to be clothes in the closet. I'm going to have school supplies. There's going to be heat. You just take those things for granted. I can't imagine the girl from tours taking these things for granted, right? But this, no one ever thanked him. And think of this too, you know, at what age, this is a poem about, I'm wondering, what age do we look back if we had good parents and say, damn, you know, they really did a lot for us. A lot that I don't even know, but it, it's taken me this long to look back. Here's the sun, the speaker. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call, and slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house. Why, why does the house have chronic angers? I, I, think, I think there is a subtle sociological commentary here. And if you remember Hayden reading from the beginning, you know, think of Hayden growing up, if he was born in 1914, growing up early, mid 20th century, African American family, a father who's busting his ass working. Think of all the, think of everything he's had to put up with. So I don't think the father's angry at the son or the family or the house. He's just bringing all that, all that life inside with him. It's not like a switch you can turn on and off stress from work, putting up with everybody, that, that anger seeps into the house. Um, when the rooms were warm, he'd call, and slowly I would rise, speaking indifferently to him. I'm fascinated by that line. When do we speak indifferently to our parents? Uh, is it when we're teenagers, right? And we're just like, yeah, yeah, pops, whatever, whatever. So I got to get back to what I'm doing. Indifferently. It's like they're not even there who had driven out the cold. The father had driven out the cold after working every day. This line always gets to me, and polished my good shoes as well. Not only did the father wake up early, get the fire going, he polished the son's good shoes as well. That's such an act of love. It reminds me, uh, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of friends from divorced parents, right? And it's always the cliche, you ever have the dad, you know, oh, okay, son, daughter, whomever, whatever. Oh, I love you, I love you. We're going to get together this weekend. We're going to do everything. We're going to, and then Friday, oh, sorry, I can't make it. It's all talk. It's no action. This father, it's all action. I don't think this father perhaps has a lot of emotional, he's not like a huggy bear. He's not, has, he doesn't have this overflow of emotion. But he shows through these actions how much he loves and cares. Polish my good shoes as well. This father who works every day with his hands, takes his hands and polishes these good shoes as well. So you have the sonnet here. You know, you know think of a sonnet, and I'm going to make a video where we look at the sonnet specifically. A contemporary sonnet is 14 lines. We have five, four, and five. And for the first 12 lines, you know, you have an Italian or Petrarchan sonnet. The change usually, the turn or the volta, could be in the ninth, ninth line. When you have a Shakespearean sonnet, the turn and wrapping the sonnet up comes in the 13th and 14th lines. The first 12 lines are really straightforward. The last two, we get a little opaque. I love this repetition here. What did I know? What did I know? of love's austere and lonely offices. What is austere? It's, it's stripped down of ornamentation. It's not fluffy, it's not exaggerated. It's stripped and bare. Love's austere and lonely offices. This love is a lonely office, right? Love's lonely offices. The son looking back, you know, and he at, at all the father did for him and realizing, damn, he did a lot. He loved me, and he showed it. I didn't know then, but I know now. It's such a powerful uh, poem. Here's, here's a great little video. Let's see. 
where the poet Kevin Young uh, talks about it. Ah, there we have it again. This, this is a nice video. I think what's tremendous about those Winter Sundays by Robert Hayden is the way that he captures both his father's affection for him and the silence surrounding it. That's very hard to do. It's hard to say, I know now that he loved me and this is how he showed it. You know, people talk about love languages and this is what you're seeing is him by waking up early in the blue black cold and you know if you've woken up in a house without heat that requires you to start the heat um you know what that feels like you know it feels real different than pressing a button and you're warm all the time and i think that that's really there's something tremendously powerful and generous about that act and it's an everyday selfless act you know there's a tension also between them being able to speak to each other as father and son in this house. And I think before I lost my father, what did I know of love's austere and lonely offices? There's a quality in that of regret, uh, but also of reclaiming and revisiting this painful gap that I think Hayden names in a way that no one else does. Um, that last question, I think, just rings me out so many different ways. Um, but he's also, through the precision and through the form, able to make that love legible to us in a way it wasn't to him as a child. And that is really a powerful moment in American poetry and world poetry. In human life, you know, how do you talk about what you know and then teach someone at the same time, you know? what you didn't know. How do you talk about what you didn't know and then teach someone at the same time? And that's what I think Hayden achieves in those winter Sundays. Mm -hmm.